We are now at the Black Twin Coffee Shop, the Twin Function House. This is the living history. Jackie, Mary. What's your name again? Jacqueline Chagnon. Mary Chagnon. Jacqueline Chagnon. Chagnon. Jacqueline Chagnon. Jacqueline Chagnon. Yeah. And Jackie. Was here in uh, 19. It has to be 1969. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. after, after the Tet Offensive. After the Tet Offensive. Wow. Uh, and everything is supposed to be uh, better. Mm. And both sides are supposed to be open mm. to to people uh, who are traveling and going back and forth. So, 73. 73. Not, yes. not 69. No, 70. It has to be 73. So you were here. Yes. And what's that mission? What's, what's the mission of that trip? I I came with first to Hanoi. Went first to Hanoi. Yeah. Uh, with three, uh, with two other people. One was a professor. The other was a student of uh, was writing a, her dissertation, and and myself and I was a speaker, um, going all around the United States speaking about what I had witnessed in Vietnam during the war. Mm. So I was part of the th the, the three, like a the team of three. I can say it's like a propaganda well, to not, learn, a witness, and then. Yeah. Uh, not propaganda, but to witness whether it was true that there was a peace agreement and that people were abiding by it, yeah. and that both sides were abiding by the peace agreement. Yeah. So we had met with Nguyen Phu Thak for about two hours, questioning um, various things, and we also um, uh, of the city, uh, not here, but in, in the north, in Hanoi. in Hanoi, because they wanted us to see, uh, be able to talk to people who had been badly bombed, yeah. and we went to also the hospital where a lot of children were handicapped, but Mai, ba ba yeah. and we, they also Gave, uh, sent us to the um, Ferris wheel, what is it? Um, it was a circus. In Hanoi. The circus in Hanoi. Because it was going to play. They wanted to know if we wanted to go to the circus. And at first I didn't know what they were really talking about when they said the circus. But it was a circus. So we went to the circus. We went to the circus grounds that night. We were taken. I am. The other people went back to the United States. I went back to uh, to Laos, where because I had three cameras with me, and two of them belonged to my friends. And you have two brothers? No, two cameras. Two cameras. Two cameras, and I needed to stop in uh, in in Laos because I wanted to know more about what was going on in Laos. Yeah. The war was still very active in Laos. And um, then I decided to see if I could get a, a visa to Saigon. And I went to the Saigon mission in Bangkok. Uh, and I applied. Uh, and I got it. So I decided, okay, I will go into Saigon and find out if there really is a peaceful agreement. Mm. Um, and when I got there, my uh, several of my friends told me, well, first you have to go and get a permission paper from, and they were not, um, they were not members of the Viet Cong, they were just, this, this is how the journalists do it, okay? And so I, I, 
I knew a lot of journalists in those days, and I asked them, how do I get to do this? And uh, they, they told me, okay, you're going to go to the 5 o'clock Follies. Do you know what the 5 o'clock Follies was? What is 5 o'clock Follies? Okay, yeah. Every, every day at 5 o'clock, PM. U, yes, the U.S. military would have its news, news about the war. It's like war. war, war um, at the at the it's the guy, like in the movie uh, Good Morning Vietnam. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's it, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would um, tell the world what the yeah. U.S. was doing. Some of it was truthful, and some of it was not. <laughs> um, but uh, and the question that was in my mind that I was exploring was, is the Paris Peace Agreement being uh, useful or is it being, is it just a showpiece and nothing has really changed? Yeah. Is there still war going on? And uh, so I got a permission paper from the Vietnamese man who was a key at the Five O'Clock Follies for the Vietnamese, for the, the Viet Cong. Um, this, um, you, you got permission from yeah. South Vietnam government? Or uh, from, uh, no, not the South Vietnam government, US from, from, from the, the Hanoi government. Hanoi government. Uh, I got permission finally to hang what? Down. To, to be able to, I said I want to go to a village, go to go to a site where the Viet Cong are, and I wanted to interview them. You to want to uh, in, interview? Interview them. And where they interview? Well, I wanted to interview them in their, in their home, in their place, oh. uh, and ask them how do they feel about the, the Paris Peace Agreement and where to be. Uh, well, at first, he said, yes, you can, you, you can go uh, right now, uh, tomorrow. So I packed a small backpack like this, very small, and I got on the bus. He gave me instructions. He said, you take this bus and somebody will meet you. Well, somebody did meet me on the first time, and I went to the village on the back of a motorbike. Um, that I spent the evening with the people, talking with them, mm -hmm. and they were telling me, and, and there was actually a young man who could speak English fairly well, and they were telling me about, that they were happy about the Paris Peace Agreement, but that it was not being observed because they were still being bombed. And a few weeks before, they had a, continued, the bombing had continued when it was supposed to have stopped. So they were still not happy. And then I, they said, okay, you're gonna sleep here. Um, and, uh, that, and then tomorrow we will take you further in and you can talk to other people. Well, what happened at night was the bombing started again. And, where, and where's that, where was that? It was uh, about, uh, I estimated it's about five, five, Six miles away from uh, uh, five to six hours, sorry, away from uh, Saigon. So it's near Cambodia. Uh, yeah, border. yeah, and it was to the right. That's what I remember. When I got off the bus, we went. And, uh, yeah, and we were in we were in a very uh, ordinary field area in a very ordinary house. It's in 19 uh, after Paris Peace. Yeah, and it was a very ordinary, uh, typical farmer's house. And um, so I went to sleep and then woke up because of the bombing. And uh, they told me tomorrow morning we're going to have to send you back right away because the bombing is, is, gonna, is, is heavy. Um, so I said, okay. And then they, and they said, you can come back later, maybe it will stop when it stops. So I agreed to that, and I 
got on the bus, went back to Saigon, where I was staying. Okay. And, and the next, uh, about four weeks later, I waited four weeks. Um, and the next, after four weeks, I got another invite paper telling me where to go. And, and oh, oh, what uh, bus I should take and that people would be waiting for me. Mm -hmm. So I did that, but that's when the, the Saigon police apparently got information that uh, they met me at, at the bus station. When I got off the bus, they put them cuffs on me and took me to their office in, in uh, Saigon. Uh, it was a little, you know, nervous for me because there had been an American, uh, sorry, a French journalist killed at that very place just a few weeks before, uh, about two or three weeks before, and he he died in in prison cell, and the French were making a big big noise about it, and it was global news. Can you tell me about the trip you you come you came here? You came here. Oh, okay. The, the trip that I came, came here. Um, that was in between when I was. Um, what year? What month? Seventy-three. And what month? Probably February. Yeah, it's February. It was Tet. February. It's had time. Yes. So, Be because I, so I, you, 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 you took a bus from Saigon to here? Yes. Okay. And it's, uh, how many people you and what? Me? Just two? Oh, well, no. Actually, there was, for part of the trip, there was uh, one guy that I knew. Um, he, he accompanied me. He was going to see his relatives. I think they're in way, if I remember. And what's the mission of that trip? That was to bring, um, we had made our whole team worked on peace issues and we advocated for peace in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Um, and we had done a book um, which was called Tell Them We Are People. And it, it was a book of poetry and the writing of children and the thoughts of older people and young people and songs from Twin Country and had um, it, it was something we used to sell as we were talking with people and they loved it. But it was it's still a, on sale too. Is it a business trip or just personal trip? It was a personal trip for me, but I did it because my my boss um, uh, was uh, wanted me to be able to give Trinkenshire a copy. Trinkenshire's copy. Uh, uh, a copy of the book. What is that book? Um, I think it's it's called Tell Them We Are People. We did three volumes, and I can't remember which one I gave to him. Um, it's uh, written by. By. I, tr I, it was written, the, 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 the stories, uh, the poetry, it's poetry, the poems were written by children, or by adults, or by uh, famous people in Vietnam, and um, it was used as a way of talking to Americans that Vietnamese people loved poetry. And they often speak about their poems and recite their poems to each other when they want to tell you something. And you want you wanted to give that book to Trinh Kong Sa? Yes. Because and you did it. Yes, I did. Uh, directly to him. Yes, I. I right came, here. I came to here because my friend brought me here. He was going to visit his relatives. They lived further away, and so he brought me here, and then uh, I, I stayed for 
an entire afternoon and evening into the evening. And then I said, I need to find a place to stay for overnight and tomorrow I will take the bus back to, to Saigon. And so some, somewhere around here, they, they led me to a place that I stayed close by. Do so you remember about this house? I remember it being a house like this. Not, where did not you, fancy. Uh, where did you uh, sit? sit? On the floor. On the floor, yeah. yeah. Yeah, everybody was sitting on the floor and um, he was singing and... Sing himself singing? Yes, he was singing and he was playing when I walked in. And then I was introduced um, as being uh, an American woman working on peace in, mm. in United States uh, trying to stop the war and he was just so pleased and then he he sang a special song he said this is in your honor <laughs> I don't even remember the song because I never had a recorder with me it is in concert is same age like you or he's older Maybe no he's, he's, older. he's, he's uh, about the same age as I am it, it, today he would be about the same age I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was, uh, he was thin. I remember that, and I had seen him. Mm. My friend Don Luce knew him very well. Mm. Uh, Don is the one who gave me the book. He said, "If you go to uh, 39. 39. 39. Okay, so it's, he's seven I'm a little years. bit seven years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember him being thin." Yeah, he's always thin. Yeah, and I remember... Smoking. Yeah, smoking a lot. Um, 